Hey, what's up? Welcome to Parsec Soda Tips and Tricks. I'm Flav, the developer of Parsec Soda, and I compiled in this video everything I found out about how to use Parsec Soda and how to get the most out of it when I was testing my app. I divided this video into chapters in case you're watching it a second time. You can find the chapters here at the side or down in the track bar. If you like my content, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the bell button and most importantly, watch the whole video because that watch time isn't going to increase by itself. Okay, then let's get started. And the first chapter is, how do I get the gamepads to do what I want them to do? And to understand that, you have to know how X input works. Okay, so first thing, let's move this here so you can see better. In case you're asking yourself, what is this? This is Patty. It's an easy and responsive gamepad tester I created for solely for this purpose. If you want to download this, it's free and I'll leave a link into the card up there and down into the description. The first thing you have to keep in mind is that these virtual gamepads, they are limited by X input from Microsoft. And X input only has four slots. So that means if you plug a physical controller, you're occupying one slot. That is very important. So let's insta instance these virtual gamepads. You see, now the indices are perfectly fine and everything is going as expected. But watch this. I'll try to plug a physical controller before instancing the gamepads. Okay, here it is. This is the physical controller, okay? And, and it is, and this controller is occupying the slot one. So now watch what happens when I try to instance a virtual gamepad. It goes to slot, slot two, X input, is crazy and predictable. Sometimes you will click the buttons and the indices will miss. They'll show like orange values, random numbers. It's just how Microsoft Act Input works. And that happens especially if you have more than four controllers. In this case, I have a physical one and four digital ones. So the, the way to check if these values are correct is this one. You host a session, then you open open Parsec app, join your own session through the link, then you pick a controller. If you can press diagonally, that means this controller is correct. You can see here. I can input diagonals. If it bugs, it keeps resetting the, the values. Every time you press a different button, then the index, index is wrong. Also, the easiest way to get the gamepad in the correct index order to work exactly as you want is this one. First, you unplug everything, everything, even physical controllers have this empty. Then you plug all of the digital gamepads. Then the, hopefully the index order will be correct. And now you want to, pl to plug a physical controller to play as a host and not use a virtual one. So you choose a slot and you unplug it. In this case, I'm going to unplug the first one. And now I plug my physical gamepad here, right down here. So now my gamepad is X input one. That is the easy way to do. But there is one more way 
the advanced way. Okay, now let's see the advanced way, which is my preferred way. First, you plug all of the gamepads and you make sure they're in correct order. And now you will need a direct input controller, not an X input one. You plug a direct input controller, a dual shock, because it will not waste an X input slot. And now, if you host a session, you join again from the link, right? Here. When you press a button on your direct input controller, it will capture one slot, one X input slot from these controllers. And now you as a host locally can play as a guest. You can strip the controller from yourself. You could you could do it from the keyboard too. Now I'm pressing on keyboard. If you if you pay attention to this uh analog, the behavior is like it's not analog because it's a keyboard. And the device index is going to change from the keyboard it's zero and from the, the gamepad it's a different number. And now you see this is much 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 more smooth, much softer because it's it's a gamepad. So this is the best way to play, but you would have to keep the focus in this parsec window. It's not always possible, but it is a way. For now, I'm trying to implement a solution, a new window here. I'm considering the possibility of having this new window that will let you map another controller, one that is not one of these. You could map to one of these so you can play as a guest too. But right now, Parsec Soda doesn't have that feature yet. Oh, I almost forgot. One more advice about controllers. If this is plugged correctly, if it's working, do not touch it. Okay? Avoid plugging and unplugging stuff. That is the reason I created the, the virtual guest thing, the ownership that shows the name here, host controlling. I made this so we don't have to unplug the USB thing, the USB port at operational system level. If we can just switch who's handling it, it is way better. It works in memory, it's within Parsec Soda memory, so avoid pressing this button unnecessarily. The main reason I like to play this way with the direct input controller plus Parsec client is because sometimes I want to switch places with some guest in the room and if I use an Xbox controller, an X input controller, I have to unplug physically the connector from the USB port and if I keep plugging and unplugging all the time that could damage my controller plug and my USB port. Meanwhile, if I'm using uh, the virtual one, I just have to press strip and then it's unplugged. Anyone can pick that controller. It becomes free to, to anyone to pick it. Chapter 2. My audio sounds worse than an old radio. Okay, the next step is sound issues. Some people have sound issues. If you're facing some sort of uh, glitching, stuttering, anything in the audio, you come to the advanced audio settings and you try to change the frequency. Normally, that should solve the, the issue. Some very specific users, even though they try every single possible combination here, they still get some sort of audio glitches. It may solve to you to choose a different uh, audio source from here. And you should also keep in mind here from the sound panel, the window sound panel, which frequency does your device operate in? 
from the here from the advanced tab you can see what are the settings from this the source this is the the microphone and this tab is for the the speakers in my case i'm using a virtual one because i do a lot of uh, a lot of editing i use voice meter banana to mix audio but yeah you should keep in mind uh, the frequencies that should solve your issue for the most for the few ones who are still having issues i'll have to look further into that I, i'll have to investigate maybe even debug remotely using parsec i've done that before for some guests so because some bugs they are so complicated and, and so specific for setups that i cannot reproduce here in my machine i have to debug them in the original system the original context they are happening chapter three I don't even know where my focus is. In this case, I'll be running a game so I can show you easily the main issues concerning focus. I'll be using Fight and Rage. Let's run it. I chose this game because it pauses when you unfocus. Let's run a session here and then you can also see the pause button behind back there behind this window see it's paused it's a game feature so now I'm going to join this room I'm running fight and rage and I joined my own session you see it's running right here and here is my parsec window if I press a button on the controller I input right uh, and since I'm using the parsec focus thing you can already see the problem if I try to focus here and press something, it won't work, right? Because I'm not focusing the parsec window. And this game requires focus. So you have two choices. Either you plug a direct X input controller and not a, D, a, 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 not, a, not a, a direct input one, and you don't use parsec to be a virtual guest of yourself and you just focus the window and play that is one way to do it the other way is you use fake focus okay so I'll leave a link in the card and possibly in the description down the card up there and to this app what it does it fakes the focus in some window of your choice but the problem is sometimes it's kind of buggy and it doesn't work quite well for every possible game but it is a workaround it is one more tool you can use to do what you want to do so let's let's uh, apply fake focus to this you click the window then you click fake focus it will uh, show the name here at the title then it's usually three options these two and this one uh, this one here is usually irreversible so I try not to use it if possible most games require this one though but if you can get away without this do not check it these two are usually required so I'll, I'll just uh, keep them both and then you click run. So now the game has focus even though I'm, I'm not focusing it. See, I'm focusing this parsec window. Not the game window. It doesn't pause anymore. That is one way. Okay? To work around the focus issue. The good thing about parsec soda is parsec soda itself doesn't require window focus you can see already that I, I'm not focusing it I'm focusing this parsec window and still the the inputs there they get registered so you can also lock the inputs to prevent people from uh, unnecessarily sending inputs and the reason the the game is still moving it, 
it's because it's uh, it's picking my uh, my dual shock and not the X input. It re uh, probably reads all of those game pads, but that's that's that specific for this game. If you see right here, it, it doesn't get the inputs anymore. If I click here, then it's back. The reason why Parsec takes out focus when you try to click somewhere else is a valid reason. It's because there is a security issue. And this security issue is Windows supports gamepad navigation. That is a big deal. It means if someone is pressing buttons, then you open this menu, they can navigate the menu. See? That is a big deal. You, you can actually select folders and start executables by using a gamepad. And that's why you need to lock stuff sometimes to prevent people from messing up your operational system. The way Parsec chose to do it is to lock every time you want focus, but I'd rather have a button to manually tell when you want the guests to input and when you don't. Another reason to use fake focus is if you want to type in chat, because every time you try to type here, you take out the focus from the game window and that will pause the game if you don't have fake focus activated. So that is going to break the experience for the other guests. But when you put the fake focus, then you can just type normally and guests keep playing, uh, sending the inputs and the game runs in the background and everything's fine. To be honest, when I'm hosting, sometimes I don't even see the game window. I just keep layers and layers of windows in my second monitor covering the, the, the whole thing and I never click it. But that is a topic for the next chapter. Chapter 4. How do I create cool stream overlays? The way I do it is through open broadcast software, also known as OBS. But OBS is a huge topic and could easily have its own dedicated video. If you want me to create an in-depth specific video for OBS, tell me in comment section. Just in case you're watching this from a future in which I actually created a dedicated video to OBS, the link will be at the top cards or at the description below. And the most important thing to use OBS with Parsec Soda is to right click the canvas and then create some projector. I will show you first with the windowed projector and then with the full screen. When you right click and choose this option, you get a preview window. And then you can maximize it. It is going to fill the, the whole desktop, right? And you can also switch on the fly to full screen if you wish, back and forth. And when you do full screen, you get this. And here's the catch. Uh, Parsec Soda shares the whole desktop. So if you put in the shared desktop a OBS preview window in full screen, filling up all of the screen, everything, then guests in Parsec Soda will see only this preview. So it looks like a perfect seamless stream. That is the trick. There is the main trick. It may be uh, taxing on performance because you're running now two uh, rendering softwares. Okay, so two times encoding and in this case of my scene, which is pretty cluttered, uh, a bunch of layers but that gets you a better quality stream and it's up to you, it's up to you to choose uh, if you want to do this if you how deep you want to go into the rabbit hole you can also go back to window 
And remember uh, that if you use windowed, people will see the bars, this, the windows bar and the black border. So full screen is usually better. And then I just play the game as a host looking at this main window. Okay, uh, I don't usually play looking at the game itself. I, I play looking at the preview because it's just more convenient and then I play the, the same way the guests play. Also, don't forget that Parsec Soda lets you choose which screen you want to display. So keep the window projector, the full screen projector preview in the same monitor you chose to share here in Parsec Soda. Chapter 5 a little touch of Nucleus Co-op. Nucleus Co-op can be a bit tricky. We all know that Parsec Soda works best if you have at least two screens. So if you're using Parsec Soda with Nucleus Co-op in a single screen, in a single monitor, things can get a bit messy. But it's still possible though. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind is that Nucleus Co-op has this shortcut, which is Control T. I think I think it's this one. It lets you hide all of the windows, the game windows, without stopping the game flow. That will be necessary if you want to see the chat or mod something, but you will have to interrupt game flow if you have just one screen and you're using this okay so first thing you set up the game pads the way I I told you in the chapter one if you didn't see this go back there and check the chapter one and then you come here and you split the screen you're going to show into several pieces you need so the thing is I'm displaying the first my first desktop here then this is going to show through Parsec Soda so I'm going to use the second one for the controllers okay why because this keeps hidden and then I overlay here but if you don't want to use overlays, you can always keep everything in the first one. No problem. No problem at all. And then you keep your chat, your Parsec Soda window, and everything here. It's up to you to choose how you want to do this. I personally prefer to have a stream overlay. So I'm already missing a third monitor. The ideal scenario for Nucleus Co-op is that you have three screens, then you run the game in the third screen, and then you save the first one to stream the image from the preview, OBS preview, and in the second screen you have the Parsec Soda window so you can see the chat and do stuff. That's the best way, but most people don't have three screens possibly most people just have one screen so that's it if you have just one screen you will have to use this a lot and every time you alt tab people will see your parsecs of the window what you're typing even before you send the message people will see it but that is the only way to use nucleus co-op with parsecs soda. And one thing to remember is never turn this off. Once you set up the controllers, keep them there. Because Nucleus Co-op is very sensitive to the gamepad setup. To all of the devices setups. One very important detail about Nucleus Co-op is if you're running this and you have like all of the instances for instance instances split in your screen do not focus any of these windows focus something else focus patty focus parsec soda 
or even Nucleus Co-op Windows itself, but do not focus any of the game instances, because once you focus one of them, this very specific game instance takes all of the, the possible resources of your machine to itself. It captures the most of your hardware resources. And then all the other instances, they starve. They, they cannot reach the desired performance. Just keep that in mind. You gotta keep all of the game instances unfocused. Chapter 6. Chat commands. A lot of people forget that Parsec Soda has chat commands, and some of them are a big deal. Also, the guests can perform chat commands too. You don't need to be an administrator or the top tier to perform a chat command. So maybe you want to remind your guests that they can do commands too. Okay, and one very important command is pick that lets your guests themselves choose which gamepad they want to use. That is very important to prevent soft locking. Imagine you're playing a fighting game and the second player or the loser or whatever, uh, he quits the room and he doesn't choose rematch or select character screen or go to main window and the first player just keeps hanging in there waiting for a new player to join the room and free him from that that soft lock, that menu he's stuck in. This command prevents a lot of soft locks. It, uh, if you're playing for instance Gauntlet and a player joins, picks a character and then leaves, any guest in the room can switch gamepads and drop out that specific player. So this is a very powerful command I created specifically to prevent soft locking. So make use of it and remind your guests they can do it too, not only you, the host, you don't, be, you don't have to be physically present to solve the issue of soft locking. Another command that's more useful than I anticipated, it's FF or drop. If you use FF command, you drop your gamepad. I didn't expect this to be so useful, but people do actually use it a lot, because before this command, people used to quit the room to reset gamepad or to pick a different gamepad or to just solve a bug, and the drop command it lets the guest stay in the room and remove it, its own gamepad and, and make it free. So you can pick it again right after you drop it. And that solves a lot of issues with controllers for some specific users. One very important administer command you should keep in mind is the limit. Because there is one detail about Parsec Soda it's not explicit. By default, Parsec Soda limits the amount of gamepads the guests can have. So if a guest tries to plug two gamepads locally in his machine and he joins your room and then he, uh, he's trying to use both gamepads at the same time, one for each character, for instance, it is not going to work by default. You have to change the limit of gamepads for that specific user. And you use limit command uh, for doing that. You type limit and then the username or a portion of it, a, portion, a long enough portion of it, and the number of gamepads you want him to have. And that's the way you do it. In the specific case someone wants to use two gamepads, you can actually change that from the chat commands. Keep that in mind. Another very important command is when. Have you ever noticed this number right here? You may not know what is this for. Well, it exists for a reason. And the reason is, a guest may have multiple gamepads, right? And this number identifies which gamepad the person is using right now. So if you join the room, and then you try to pick 
a gamepad from keyboard, it's probably going to be zero. And if you try to pick it from, I don't know, a second gamepad, then it's going to be a different number. Each device has, has its own device number. It is not always uh, uh, super pretty uh, uh, zero, one, and two. No, this thing is a mess, and it comes from Parsec SDK. Sometimes it's 693. Sometimes it's uh, 100. Sometimes it's 47. Uh, you have no control over this thing. The, the command uh, exclamation mark one, it exists to work around a Parsec client bug. That's actually the reason I created it. Uh, some people, I don't know why, but they set up their gamepads. They mess up this device index. Maybe it's their controller that keeps plugging in and out. Uh, bad, bad connection. The, the the cable plug the cable had. Maybe it, it has some problem. Uh, the wire is warning. It is it's worn out. I don't know, but for some reason, Parsec keeps changing this value for some users. And those users, they can ignore the device index. If they just have one controller and they don't care if they're playing on keyboard or gamepad one or two or whatever it is they are set up, they can trigger one. And when they do that, every press they, they do in any device should be detected. Either it's keyboard or a gamepad, it, it does not matter. It will be detected. It This can get buggy if uh, they keep pressing on multiple devices at the same time. It's not meant for using multiple devices at the same time uh, for a single controller. It's just a workaround, so if this number keeps changing, they can still keep playing without in any interruptions. Because I've had in the past some users that suffered from that, and they had to keep dropping the gamepad with drop command or FF in the middle of a fight, and I didn't want that to happen. So I created this, so 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 they can just ignore at all the the device thing the device index thing because they don't need that feature i know all of this may feel a bit daunting at first but that's why i divided the video into chapters so you can watch it again and again and again and search easily for the specific information you need don't forget to tell me in the comments what you think of this video what you need your doubts anything just comment there Seriously, just comment there, I need it. Also, like this video, share, subscribe, and please watch the whole video because I desperately need that watch time. Because YouTube algorithm is no joke. I'm also leaving my social media links in case you want to keep in touch with this project.